What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. I'm Dick Machinko. And I'm Peter Austin. There we go. You got your full name in there this time. I did. Never going to quite get used to it, are you? Or won't you have to? What a weird sentence that was. Because this is my last podcast. Oh, won't you have to? So that is a bit of a weird... It does I, I It does make you... grammatical sense. Yeah. It's just weirdly constructed. Won't you? You could have just said you won't have to. Won't you? Hmm? hmm? Because I'm... It's your last... I'm, I'm leaving on the rocket ship straight back to Mars. Oh. Uh, ben will be returning next week. Your uh, planet is, needs you. Yeah. Oh. Just somewhere else. There's another family in need of a dick. Okay. Um, and I will dick them good. Okay. Well, just dick, only dick the members of the family who allow you to say, yes, please dick me. I'm going to give them the good dick. Okay. Uh, whether they like it or not. No, 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 Because no, sometimes no. it's about what you need rather than what you want. No, it's want. not. No, um, no. So I will go to the family in need, and I will provide my services. They, for they them. need to. They have to be consenting. I Just hope as you needed, learnt this on you our You needed planet. some dick as well, and into your life I came. Yes, right into your life. But I allowed it. I, I allowed it. I it. allowed it. it. I, yeah. You summoned me. You put the you put the satanic sim- symbols on the floor. Anyway, yeah. this is my last podcast. Uh, it's a, it's a video game podcast. Just just in case you weren't aware, not an athletics podcast. Hmm. And uh, we take some questions from people at home and. Do some weird news. Just and bollocks like that. Just, just, sort of. uh, just utter codswallop, really. Yeah. Codswallocks. Uh, we are, of course, sponsored by a fantastic series of companies that allow us to keep doing this show. We are. Thank you. Um, it's, it's a revolving sort of circus of sponsors because for some reason they never stick around for more than one week. Can't really work out uh, why that How is. How odd. Uh, this week it is uh, Pokemon Centers. They're, yeah. they're sponsoring the podcast. Hey, Americans. You ever wondered what free healthcare was? Well, if you're the same age as us, or maybe slightly older, or even younger, then you will have experienced the luxuries of free healthcare in uh, in the Pokemon universe. Centers. And they want to say to you today that it's possible to extend this to you, adult humans. It's real. It's crazy. But it is possible. A Pokemon Center's diversifying into human centers. Is that what you're saying? Well, free healthcare. They're they're suggesting that they'd be interested. So vote yes on uh, Bill sixty nine sixty nine four hundred and twenty, um, and let people know that you want a human center brought to you by the same people who heal your fictitious Pokemans. Yeah, the Democrats coming soon. Mm. Maybe who's and uh, probably not. What You're American. What are you like? But a very, you know, a political, a, you know, borderline political sponsor. We're open focused to it. at one one nation of the world. We are open to political sponsorships, right. If they align with our views, yeah. and we believe that humans deserve the right the, the same access to healthcare as pokemon. Yeah, we believe at the very least that we're essentially a tribal species at the, at the you know the end of the day and you know back when we lived in tribes hmm. just the the doctor man the the witch doctor man Do- or doctor woman or doctor well I guess a witch doctor woman Otherwise it would be a tribe. wizard doctor wouldn't it if yeah. it was a male witch doctor. But the the healer would just heal members of the tribe. Mm. Because they it were able to. It benefited them. It yeah. benefited them it to have useful. everyone healthy. And they wouldn't say, bring me three coconuts. They would say, yeah, all right, I'll 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 heal as long as you go out and, you know, you do you do the hunting. You hunt, you gather. You do the weaving. You you raise. We'll you, all just do our bit. You and praise. I'm a qualified doctor, so I will I will dock you. Exactly. Yeah. A, much like I dick people. Mm. And uh, it's all a cyclical thing. Anyway, so anyway, make sure you, really you vote. Went... That was a good metaphor. Yeah. Uh, make sure you vote yes on that. Thank you to Pokemon Centers. Branching out soon into human centers. Look out for those. We start off, Peter, with a question from our fantastic patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, who, yes. of course, we're joking. Those are the real people that <laughs> let us do the show because they're amazing and they support us with their money. Mm. If you want to support us with your money, you can do it in a variety of ways. But should you choose to do it via Patreon, you will be allowed to ask questions for the podcast. You will be allowed. You will be permitted and we may read them out loud on the show. We may read them aloud. Yeah. Girls allowed. Mm. We did it. Peter Austin. Yes. What's the first one? This one is from Reese Jones, uh, who asks, "Do you rage quit? Are there any games that have made you break a controller?" Ah, oh, I will. No. Uh, have you? Are uh, you strike me as someone who takes it out on maybe a family pet a or something like that, or a sibling? Just you, you let it build up, and then you just take it out on a human being. No, I don't. I don't. It doesn't really make me like that mad. Like nothing really. I I rage quit. 
Sorry, my no was to breaking controllers. Right. I do sometimes rage quit, but that's that's all the outlet I need really is just like turning the game off angrily. Ah. But uh, you know, I've I've never ever broken a controller in my life. I don't think I've even thrown a controller and it not break. Right. Um, never damaged a console for the same reasons. It's it's all just I don't know. I don't really understand. You know that that thing costs money, and it I does. don't know why you would why you would want to treat it like that, even in the heat of the moment. Well, that's the um, thing. It would be it would very much be the heat of the moment. Absolutely, I'm sure you um, probably re- people regret breaking their controllers. But I'm like I, uh, me and me and my fiance, we're we're basic as basic as f, and right. we watch fail army compilations sometimes. Good stuff on like a Friday night. You uh, you like Lad Bible on Facebook? We don't actually like Lad Bible big, on Facebook. Big me- big member of the Lad Bible. But army. that's kind of who I've feel like I am when I'm watching Fail Army. Right, okay. But anyway, it's enjoyable. It's Fail Compilation. And uh, every now and then you do just see like a bunch of lads playing FIFA and like a goal will go in and the fail is that like he throws throws his controller and smashes the TV screen or he pulls the controller out of the wall and literally throws it out of the window. Okay. And I don't understand. Yeah, I don't get that. That That is underlying anger issues that go beyond yeah, absolutely. losing FIFA. I have broken controllers in the past. Okay. Um, most of the time, it's in the heat of the moment, like just throwing it at the floor, like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah. Uh, but one time, I really... I wasn't in a good place, admittedly. Right. One time, I did stamp on a controller. Like, yeah, I put you? it on the floor and I stamped... Like, I thought, I'm going to stamp on this controller yeah. now. It's weird, Peter, because it broke... I couldn't believe it. Really? Crazy. Um, How odd. But uh, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't happen anymore. That was like, God, maybe five, six years ago. Um, and I was like, it, w- it was sort of like the, the peak of my trophy obsession was starting to happen. Right. It's when I was starting to get a lot of my platinum trophies to build the bulk of it. Now I get like maybe one platinum trophy every few months, yeah. maybe. Back then it was like, right, what can I platinum next? Right. Immediately. Like I wasn't even playing games for fun. And when I was playing games for fun, it was how easy is the platinum? Yeah. Can I get it? Um there were a couple that I don't know if I broke controllers over, but certainly rage quit over. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mass Effect 2, playing that on the hardest difficulty was right. the worst thing in the world. Spec Ops the Line nearly killed me on the hardest difficulty. Yeah. That game was just ludicrous. Just constant death. Retry, retry, mm-hmm. retry over and over again. Uh, more recently, in fact, this last weekend, I don't really play games online anymore because they don't make me rage quit, but they do make me, they don't make me happy. Like, I don't have time for, for, for sort of avenues of, that are, that are meant to be enjoyed. Yeah. That just bring me nothing but frustration. I kind of know what you mean. Uh, which is why I tend to avoid online games now unless they're like co-op and stuff. I very rarely play competitive stuff. Um, I've only been playing Crash Team Racing online, uh, just to get like the Grand Prix stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like the, the daily and the weekly challenges and stuff just to play one match online because <laughs> but I'll talk about it more in a minute but Dark Souls 2 I was playing that last weekend and I, I had to just I just sort of I didn't throw it but I gently just sort of tossed my controller to the floor like okay I need to this is making me really upset I'm going to have to stop now I mean the, the closest I've come to stamping on a controller in, in the way that you did is that I uh, for a time I had an Xbox 360 I didn't have a PS3 mm. and uh, my Xbox 360 was a fairly early model. I got it fairly, you know, uh, soon into when they were releasing, they sold them. Mm. And uh, so, of course, it got the Red Ring of Death um, after oh. maybe about a year, maybe so. You know, I think I did all right off it, but you still, you know, it's annoying. And I think what I did was, and this wasn't because I was angry. It was because I just thought, well, I won't get a chance to do this again. Mm. I, I took it out. I took the Xbox into the garage and I just smashed it up with a hammer. <laughs> and I think that was just because it was like, wow, this is a really expensive piece of kit. I did it. But, um, you know, ordinarily, I'm not able to smash expensive pieces That's of kit great. with did a Did you hammer. not want to get it fixed? Well, there were like, if you got them fixed, like they used to just break anyway. And oh, like, wow. There you were should... like internal things that you could try. You could like, you know, if, you could, if you're able to get inside the casing, which was really hard, mm. there were like things that you could try and do at home as well. But I just thought, screw this. I'll just get a new one. Should have put it in a towel. Yeah. That was the trick, wasn't it? Done. Put it in a towel, turn it on. What a crazy time that was. When I say screw this and get a new one, I don't want people at home to think that I was made of money. I meant screw this, I will save up for a long time and get a new right. one. Um, but yeah, in terms of games that have made me rage quit over the years, Tekken 5 and Tekken 6, the final bosses on those, particularly Tekken 6, mm. he's called Azazel. He's like a pterodactyl 
Egyptian mummy. Okay. That's kind of what he is. It's a good combination. Yeah, and he is just the he's he's just like it's not even fun. It's just not fun oh, at all. Oh, that's a shame. Um a tech of five not so bad, but uh that that used to feel a bit cheap. Um mm-hmm. uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head now, but Kingdom Hearts. There's some hard bosses oh. in that because it's kind of Final Fantasy based. So you get, you know, and uh, various sort of large monsters and, and weird Disney bosses. I had a really hard time with Maleficent. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was pretty tough. Um, oh. She had like two forms as well. So you had this whole thing where you fight her just as the queen. And then after you've done all of that, which takes a, it's a bit of a slog, she then just turns into a giant dragon and then you have to fight her again. Hey, that's fine. Immediately again. I mean, like. People do that sometimes. Yeah. And uh, also, Crash Team Racing. Time trials, slash, I guess relics is, is more specific. Yeah. Uh, some of the relics have actually made me a little bit mad recently. Um, really? I've kind of, yeah, I've, that's, again, I've not thrown the controller, but. It's upset you. I've, I've done some swear, swearages <laughs> at the TV. <laughs> yeah. And I've had some funny looks from my fiance who's like, you know, just calm down. It's, it's okay. It's, it's just a just, video game. It's just game. a game. It's Why do you have to be mad? Why do you have to be mad? So yeah, that's that. I, happens, I rage though. quit. It happens. Like I, d- I don't know if rage quit is the right word because you can look up plenty of, as you say, fail army videos of people properly rage quitting. Yeah, but games can be frustrating sometimes. It's when they when they teeter over into, I am I am angry now. Teeter Austin. This has made me teeter Austin into into the angry zone. Smash up Xbox 360 in the garage. P- uh, teeter Austin. That's yeah. where I am right now. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Reese. Good question, Reese. It's time to move on to a groundbreaking segment. We've never talked about it before. It's one where we talk about the games that we've played. Are you ready, Peter? It's called What We're Playing. What We're Playing, Peter. Yes. What are you playing? Crash Team Racing. Are you? Yeah. That's weird. I am. I am as well. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, the new Grand Prix is out. Is it? Is that? Was it just out last time when we did the podcast? Yeah, I, don't I think, think I we, played it at the time. I, I introduced the concept of it last time. I think we both agreed that they did a pretty horrible job of explaining how yeah. it worked. Yeah. Uh, but once you get in there, it's got a great introductory video that actually explains it. Yeah, so. that's right. Last time we talked about this, I hadn't yet played it. But I have now played it a lot. I play it every night. I log on and play at least half an hour because you get a bonus. I can't even remember if it's bonus coins or bonus nitro for your for unlocking your Grand Prix stuff, but you get a bonus for the first half hour in your rewards. Yeah, you get coin bonus for that. Right, coin bonus, yeah. But you get your daily challenges anyway. Of course, you get do done your daily your, challenges, your nitro, absolutely. Nitro doodads. Yeah. Uh, I also want to correct um, an assertion that I made last week okay. when you said they've released one new track for this Grand Prix. And I, having not played it, and I think I did say I've not played it, but I believe this to be the case. I said, no, I think there's three new tracks. And you were like, oh, well, there's only one at the moment. Maybe they'll be releasing two others for the rest of the month. What I didn't realize was yep. that Twilight Sphinx Lord or whatever it's called. Twilight Sphincter. Sphincter is, takes place over three different times of day as you drive around the track. Oh, it does, actually, So I'd it? seen, like, footage of it, and I just assumed oh, that all I mean, three of those were from... I mean, they are distinct, slightly different areas, aren't they? They're different areas, but it's all yeah. one track. So that's what I was talking about. Gotcha, I see. There oh, are not... the elephants are upstairs. They've you arrived. You can't hear that, but they're going to hoover soon, I would imagine. Yeah. It's but Thursday morning. Just a, a correction. Don't, don't want to be on record saying there are two more tracks coming, because there are not. One. Um, one track. It's a good track, too. It is a good track. It's good stuff. Uh... I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the Grand Prix. It's a lot yeah. of fun. It's it's a good incentive, really. In fact, I've not played single player for the longest time. I'm yet to 100% it, and I want to, mm-hmm. but I just sit down and I play Grand Prix now, ah. uh, and it's kind of taken my uh, focus away from single player. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's not, not a bad thing. I'm still playing the game. Mm. So, yeah. No, I'd say it's the same for me, too. Um, Grand Prix now I, I'm logging in daily mm-hmm. I'm making sure because I, I, I want to get all of the things I've got I've got every challenge I can conceivably complete within the non cyclical challenge sets like the weekly the daily and yeah. the quick challenges the, qu- the quick and daily obviously reset every day weekly every week but the other ones they're there for the whole month mm-hmm. um, I've done all of the ones of those that I think I can the rest that are there is like win 10 online races yeah. in this specific buggy it's like n- no I'm not. I'm. I'm actually. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Make me. Um. So no. Uh, also, I've now assembled my, 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 my racing setup so that I get fifty percent bonus nitro say, points, just, which is great. I was just about to say I love the multiplier thing that they've added in. It kind of encourages you to try out different 
you know, different things that you've unlocked. And yeah. then uh, you get a load of bonus nitro for it if you win, mm -hmm. if you do something. So I'm getting, instead of like uh, 150 points for some of the smaller challenges, I'm getting like, uh, you know, over over 200 now, mm. which is which is great. It makes a huge difference. Um, so the weekly challenges at the time of recording have, have just cycled through. For some reason, they didn't come through on Monday. I yeah. don't know why. That was weird. Uh, but I've just gone through most of those. And I've, again, just completed those super quick. I'm now nearly halfway through the gold tier. So it's going to be okay. a bit of a grind now. I'm going to have to basically complete every daily challenge yeah. to, to get to the end of it. But I think I can do it. Um, I also finished, over the weekend, I finished Adventure Mode on hard. Nice. That was troublesome. Yeah, I uh, But I honestly found the bosses the easiest part. Because if you can get in front of them, you're sorted, basically. Yeah. But with... Uh, with the normal races, as we discussed before, it's so down to luck yeah. in that if someone hits you, um, basically the AI can just decide, okay, you're in you're in third place, you're going to get hit by like nine missiles now, mm. and the person in first place is just going to disappear forever. Yeah. Bye. It is um, that as well. I feel like you're more likely to get bombarded with loads of stuff if you're in like second or third. Mm -hmm. I find that in first, you don't actually get that much hassle. You just need to make sure you stay ahead and, you know, don't... Don't slide out on your corner or don't hit a potion that's been placed down, you know? Yeah. But I don't think you get blasted with bombs and missiles as much when you're in first, I've found. No, no, not really. Uh, I made a, a little dent in the time trials as well. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm slowly making... There's so many to do. Yeah, like I'm, yeah. I'm slowly getting there. But yeah, the, the Grand Prix is the thing that's uh, taking all of my attention at the moment. Speaking of which, we've got... You and I... Mm. We've got Crash Team Racing beef to settle tonight. We have at the time of release. Yeah, Peter Austin and Spoilers. I have made. Well, not. I mean, People if you if you've been, been keeping up, I'd like to think that you're keeping up because it's a daily tournament, so yeah. it's not really. Also, we took yesterday off, so everyone had you time to up. catch up. Yeah. So the final of the Crash Team Racing tournament is tonight. <clears throat> it's Tiny Peter Austin versus Dick Manchinko. That goes down at either six or seven p.m. on the channel. Yeah. So please, please go and watch that if for some reason you're listening to slash watching this at, at the time of release. Uh, if not, then go back and watch it. That's the final. And we'll find out who is the Crash Team Racing. Who do you think is going to win? Who is the Crash Team racing? racing? The other thing I've played very quickly, Dark Souls 2. Oh, yeah. I've got the Platinum Trophy. I did it. Nice. I did it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, the bit that annoyed me was uh, going up to Castle uh, Drang Lake. Drang Lake Castle, um, as you're obviously very familiar with. Yeah, Peter. yeah. Castle Dank, um, Dank Lake. Dank Lake. Yeah. Dab. Um, and on the on the approach to it, in the Scholar of the First Sin revision oh, yeah, of, of, uh, Sin, of, yeah. of of Dark Souls Two, which is which is the name of the PS4 re-release of it, PS4, they, they, yeah. they provided some various gameplay tweaks and stuff, tweaks. including adding a load of extra, extra like, like uh, um, you know uh, people, people and enemies and, and enemies stuff to and certain stuff, areas, yeah. particularly to Drang Lake Castle, Peter, as, yeah. as you know. No, I know. Um, and get in on, order I get to get on with it, I don't need to. Well, so, know okay, any yeah, of this. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just providing context for people who don't know. I know you know. I know. Um, to get through the 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 doors to Dragon Lake Castle, there's two little cauldrons, and you have to kill an enemy next to each one, and their soul sort of gets absorbed by the cauldrons, and then the doors swing open. Yeah. Um, the problem is, New Game Plus Plus is really hard. Yeah. There's a lot of really difficult enemies there. And then in Scholar of the First Sin, they added a load more enemies. So you have basically no time to actually fill these cauldrons without getting completely mobbed and destroyed. No, you're right. That wouldn't be so bad if the run, the approach to Drang Lake Castle wasn't so very long mm -hmm. with no bonfire on the way. Okay. So it's a long old run. I'm talking like maybe a minute and a half, two minutes of game time just running to this thing fun. which doesn't sound like much but it's really not fun if you get there and die and it, have to do it again those things are just tedious aren't they the, the so tedious resetups and I th things. I think it actually has a fail safe in there where if you die enough times the doors will just open for you really because I got back there one time and the doors were open I was like I definitely didn't open those doors but the, the last thing I needed was behind those two doors uh, because there's a vendor there uh, who sells uh, certain sorceries and that's what I needed I need to collect all the sorceries and I missed the opportunity to, to get these sorceries in my first playthrough and according to the wiki if you get to New Game Plus 2 that guy actually just sells them so okay. we're like okay that's what we've got to go to we've, that's, that's the point in the game we've got to get to is to get to this guy to sell the last things we need so I got through the doors 
I didn't kill anyone, obviously. So I was being chased by a parade of the scariest yeah. things possible. And I was running. He's at the top of these stairs. And I was running up these stairs, inis- initiating his dialogue, hammering X to get through it, and then running down the stairs as they caught up to me, and then going back up and cycling through his dialogue until he could sell me stuff. Right. And basically, I bought the spells, and the screenshot for the Platinum is like, three of these really menacing red phantoms all sprinting up the stairs towards oh, me. But I did it. It's done. I've now got that platinum trophy and it's been a long old it's been a long time coming. I did it. That's pretty surprising that they just open the doors for you if you die enough times. That oh, does not seem like a Dark Souls thing to do. It's just Dark Souls 2 is a weird game. There's yeah. there's so, we've talked about it before. And, and again, I know you're an expert of Dark Souls 2. There's just so many things they added in gameplay stuff that's just baffling. Yeah. It doesn't make sense within the context of the world. It wasn't in Dark Souls 1. And then they just took it out in Dark Souls 3 because yeah. presumably Miyazaki was like, no, what is this? why did you do this? This yeah. isn't, It feels like it was I made go away by, for a, one minute. by a different studio. It's really bizarre, like in a different engine. It is so weird. It's yeah. a weird game. It's It's got its merits, and some people think it's the best, but they're wrong, um, and that's all there is to it. Anyway. I've got a question here from Chef Mikey. 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 Mm. Dick, would you like to read the question for us, son? Yeah, I suppose so. I'll okay. come a little bit yeah. closer to the book for you. Cuphead is getting its own show on Netflix. Weird. Looks interesting. Weird news almost. It's weird news. No. As cinematic as as games are becoming, the possibilities are growing exponentially. What game or game series would you like to see get the Netflix treatment? I wouldn't call Cuphead cinematic necessarily. I get the point there. Yeah, I don't know how that would really translate unless they're literally just doing an animation, but then that's kind of the game anyway. I would watch... Well, I don't know if I'd watch it, but I, I would, I would uh, understand and respect the idea of maybe trying to to bring back the, I believe it's called rubber hose uh, animation style. It's just that sort of Steamboat Willie, okay, you know, early Disney stuff. Um, I think that's got a, a nice charm to it. And if they want to do in the same way that Cuphead brought that art style into the the gaming world, if they want to do that on, you know, a weird like modern digital, you know streaming platform but it's just a really archaic animation style i think that's an interesting sort of juxtaposition of things Mm. and uh you know good luck to him but we'll see i wouldn't watch it personally no i've I've not admittedly i've not played cuphead but it's i i would imagine it's not the story that people hang around for it's the art style and the 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 amazing gameplay yeah so i probably would have played it if it I mean, it's exclusive, isn't it, to to Microsoft? Yeah, it's not on it's not on the PlayStation. No. Uh, I think it's coming to Switch, though. Right. If you've, um, as you said, Peter, I think if if it came out on Netflix, I probably probably wouldn't watch it. I'd look at it and think that looks really nice. That's a great art style. Yeah. But I don't want to watch a series about that. Mm-hmm. That's not really interesting to me at all. So there. But what games, what game or game series would you like to see get the Netflix treatment, says Chef Mighty? Peter, I think there are so many amazing YouTubers out there who recap the lore and the world of uh, Fallout. Okay. Uh, in particular, can't remember his name. Right. It really upsets me. It's gone now. But there was a, there's a guy, he's fantastic. He, he goes around and he just recaps various areas and, and just like explains the full story and just fully explores everything, looks at all the items and stuff, and it's delivered in a really cinematic way. Mm-hmm. I'd be totally fine with a Fallout show that didn't really have a character. It was just almost like a, f- not a fly-on-the-wall documentary, but that was like a narrator just guiding you around this this wasteland and the the, the places within it and stuff. Yeah. I think it lends itself to... I mean, I think the YouTube videos are fascinating anyway, but I would watch, watch a Netflix It could series. almost be an anthology series, so it's all set in the same world, but mm. there's no single protagonist, maybe. Right. You know, a different thing happening every every week, and it may be in a different part of the world, you know? Like... Uh, Death, love, and, love, death, and robots, whatever it was called. Yeah, I'd, I'd be totally up for that. Same with them. Um, I've called on this idea over the years just because Andromeda was such a disaster. But Mass Effect, I think, would also make a just just a sci-fi series yeah. set in the Mass Effect world. I mean, there's a lot of sci-fi series that are that are not great, but I still think just with a Mass Effect twist on it, that would that would still be quite engaging. It's, I kind of feel like, in a sense, it's been a while since there's been just a kind of standard you know, typical, enjoyable, uh, non-complicated sci-fi series. You know, nowadays, if a sci-fi series does well on something like Netflix, it's because, you know, they subvert your expectations and actually it's set on Earth, but then, like, you know, 
the artifact arrives from the stars and then mm. it's actually about the human reaction to it and the, you know just weird stuff like that no, there's not just been because it's kind of a space opera effectively mass right, effect right it's not just been like a kind of simple you know people flying around in ships from planet to planet and there's some aliens to battle and you know they have relationships with each other mm. you know it's been a while since we've had something like that i think or a decent one anyway so yeah, yeah. i can see that that's uh, why i liked um guardians of the galaxy so much yeah is that it didn't it didn't go super hard on explaining how everything worked it was just sort of you're along for the ride mm -hmm. um in the corner of the screen we're now arriving in this star system at this place and it's this many you know it's this distance from whatever the yeah. hell and that was it you're now in this place and and life exists here and it doesn't need to don't worry about it's it. not like humans walking around going whoa, what is this crazy place? It's like the characters know what it is. Yeah. It just, it doesn't treat you like an idiot. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And I think a Mass Effect series like that would 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 do very well. I'd like to think so anyway. Sticking with space, uh, I thought Dead Space could make a, a good mm. horror, horror oh series. Oh my God, yeah. It could be really tense and horrible. If I'd, I'd love for a TV show to be structured in the same way as a, uh, as, as a game. In that it doesn't need a huge amount of dialogue sometimes. Sometimes it's just 20 minutes of... Basically, the beginning of the series is just like the game, Isaac arriving. Yeah. And at the end, it's him leaving. And there are some chapters where it's just like, I've got to get through the engineering bay in this episode. And it's him trying to solve stuff. And it can be like that Breaking Bad episode where there's just a fly on oh, the yeah. ceiling that he keeps trying to chase. And there's not, you know, there's not a great deal of dialogue in that. Mm -hmm. It's just... Everything is is just conveyed through emotion, and I really think the silence and the lack of dialogue in a horror uh, TV show, especially if it was just a single episode where it's like, okay, now we're doing a spacewalk, and it's just him, like you know, trying to solve these puzzles in yeah. space in complete silence. I think that would be his something own as well. All yeah, the time. I think that'd be really interesting. There'd be some episodes that you know. <clears throat> He'd bump into NPCs or there'd be a lot of dialogue chatter through his headset or whatever. Yeah. And then there'd be some episodes that are just completely no dialogue at all. Mm -hmm. Him trudging through. I'd, I mean, I wouldn't watch it, but no, I, I don't I'd think love you it. I'd love it if there was a show that was structured like that. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, also, I put down Bioshock. Could be fun. Mm -hmm. Again, that's just another world that I think is is fun to just explore in the same way that Fallout is. Um, you know, you wouldn't have to follow the story of... Uh, the you know the first game or any of the any of the three games it could just be here's rapture um i've kind of talked about this before i think maybe we're talking about video game movies but uh here's rapture maybe it starts a little before the kind of fall of rapture mm -hmm. so things are kind of bad at the very beginning of the series but it's still okay and then things just descend into absolute hell just over a, a period um but the thing that I think might make the best Netflix TV show in that I don't think there's really a competitor for it right now mm. is Bully. Has, okay. Is there a decent, like, boarding school kind of, you know, bad kids doing doing bad stuff uh, series right now? I don't think so. I suppose it would depend on the, like, the age group it was, it was aimed at, right? Because if it was teen-focused, it would be probably pretty tame. And not no, that. yeah, I don't think it should be. Maybe the in-betweeners is the closest that... That we came to bully in terms of just a very honest look at you know young yeah. adults in a school situation i don't really know but that was more about them being awkward whereas bully is kind of like you know that they're gonna they're gonna grow up and just be characters in a gta game because they're all terrible people yeah you know um so i think that could be really interesting i think there's some really cool characters in bully and some some fun missions and story story arcs and stuff so uh i think that'd be, that'd be really good i'd mm -hmm. watch that Peter, mm. do you uh, something smell a bit strange to you? I don't know. I'm a bit stuffy. I've got hay fever. Okay, well then allow me to fill you in. It smells weird because it's time for weird news. Oh, I see. Peter, weird news. Dick. What you got for me? I've got some weird news right here. Go on. I've just opened the wrong chat. Good. I send it to myself on Facebook Messenger and then open it on my phone and I just open the wrong one. Good stuff. Just nearly started reading some very personal information. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have been able to stop yourself no. once you started. Uh, dear Mr. Austin, you, I can confirm, this is from the VD clinic. Oh. Oh, you've got, you've got you've all got of, super VD. All of the VUDs. <laughs> uh, this is from PCGamer.com, mm. Dick. Yeah. 
a hilarious Capcom shareholder didn't hold back at a recent meeting. Okay. Okay, sounds hilarious already. This story is actually from nine days ago, but I was a bit spoiled for choice last week, so I bookmarked this and thought I'd bring it. I thought it's only okay. going to be a week old. I can probably get away with... I've not know. heard anything about it. Okay. Uh, so I'll skip the little subheading because that kind of spoils some of the best bits. Okay. Several times a year, public companies chat with investors about how the business is going, answering questions from analysts, analysts, yep. and shareholders at the end. In the games industry, these questions are usually very boring. Listening to the EA, Activision, and Ubisoft calls, we've now heard at least three iterations of, so what does Fortnite mean for the landscape? <laughs> Brilliant. Good. Good question. Good, good. But as Nico Partners senior analyst Daniel Ahmed pointed out on Twitter, a Capcom shareholders meeting held back in June was the exception to the rule. Mm. You can read the full transcript here, and there's a link in the, in the article. But there's really just one investor or troll who sneaked in you need to know about. They begin their barrage with my all-time favorite shareholder question. My son is a fervent online game player, but says that Capcom's graphics are unsophisticated. Please do something about this. <laughs> Bit of a weird okay. direct request. Yeah. Uh, I love everything about that. The Sun. The firm request that they do something about The Sun's opinion. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Capcom, of course, gave the standard response, noting that it has become able to collect feedback from players in a manner of different ways. Right. The questioner was not done there, though. After a big swing with question one, they came back with a strong left hook. Regarding arcade operations, when my son was younger... <laughs> Arcade trading games were popular, generating long lines to play. I would really like to see a comeback for arcades as a family entertainment option. I want you to invent an explosive hit arcade machine. <laughs> <laughs> what a demand. Okay. I see no reason why one wouldn't invest in an explosive hit arcade machine, says the article. Capcom should do this, in my opinion. <laughs> Still, Do, make a good game. Yeah, please. Please make a good game for my son. Mm -hmm. Still, they were not done. After insisting Capcom make its graphics better and also invent a very good arcade machine, which is quite a bit of work, this attendee still had one more request. Have you provided any gifts for shareholders today? I want some original Capcom merchandise. <laughs> oh my god. The answer was no. How cruel. And then it just sort of carries on. But oh, wow. They just sound like an absolute nightmare, don't they? She can't be real, can she? Was her name Lorraine? Just it might be interest. a man. I just It sounded okay. a bit like, may I see the manager? Uh, no, I need to see the manager, please. Yes. I, can I speak to the manager? I will speak to the I manager. Will sp where, Where's bring my me your swag? manager. Firstly, make a good game. Yeah. Secondly, make it look good. Thirdly... Where's my bag? Where's my free? Where's my free stuff? bag with the t-shirt in it? This is all for my son, I yeah. should say. I'm a big inv I'm big time investment investor person. Yeah. It sounds like uh, from BoJack Horseman, uh, Vincent Adult Man, right? Which is uh, very clearly a, a child uh, that's on another child's shoulders wearing a trench, coat a trench coat with uh, with two brooms for for arms. Right. And he's called Vincent Adultman. Yeah. Um, and he just sort of wanders around and nobody, very few people see through the fact that he's clearly a child in a trench coat okay. for whatever reason. This sounds like this person is, hello, yes, I am Susan Investor Woman. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm here to do serious investing. Please give me a shirt. She's also, my called... son wants a game that looks nice, please. <laughs> she's definitely called Susan. You think? She's or, a real Susan. Or Linda, maybe. Okay. Or... Sorry to Susans and Lindas out there. Yeah. But if you were part of this shareholder meeting, let us know. It's really important. So there you go. That's slightly weird. That is weird. That that's going on behind closed... Well, not even closed oh, doors dear. in Capcom. That's public information. Well, but... that's what Capcom get for having a smash hit like Monster Hunter World. They're yeah. back in the public eye now. Not that they ever went anywhere. But, but make it look did, better. Uh, yeah, put make it on it an arcade better, cabinet and give me a mouse pad. Yeah, I want a mouse pad with my son's face on it. Yeah. My gamer son. <laughs> I want a big picture of my gamer son in your game. Dick, have you got some weird news? We now go to Polygon. Okay. What happened when a Fallout 76 fan pretended to be a beggar? A digital uh, social experiment. Oh, okay. I like this kind of thing. I like when people play games in, in interesting ways. So this is this is a little fun one. This isn't like, uh, you know, this isn't going to blow anyone's mind, but I just thought it'd be interesting and a bit weird to find out uh, what this person has been getting up to in Fallout 76. I used to do this on RuneScape, incidentally. Did you, I Peter? hang out outside the bank and just say, free stuff, Pauls. <laughs> Did you ever get anything? Yeah. 
What got some pretty good stuff sometimes. I got like a, I got like a black long sword. That's pretty good. I got some a little bit of money occasionally. Okay. Yeah, bit of armor and stuff. You you weren't the so you were outside the bank while I was inside going B sale, B sale, B sale, B set bank sale. Wisp me bank. I don't know what that means. B sale. Now watch me wisp. I know that's that's Guild Wars. Sorry. Oh, you nerd. Yeah. B sale, B sale. Uh, uh, bones selling bones. Got bones for sale. I used to sell cow hides. Oh, really? Yeah. People love the bones. Yeah. You get a lot of money for bones. Mm. Anyway, that's RuneScape. And and Andres, Andres Lamantis, I think, a 36-year-old from Argentina, knew that Fallout 76 players were known for being helpful, as many take it upon themselves to be the NPCs of the wasteland. This is true. But how far would a player go to help a fellow comrade out? And uh, can I just call him Mr. A? Because this I've looked through this article. It says his name a lot, and I can't really pronounce it. Can you try it once? Andre Slamantis. Oh my, that's all one word. It's all one word. It's his username. Andres Lamantis. Andres, Lam- Andres Lamantis. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. No. Mr. A. Goodbye, Mr. A. Tested this out with a special build where he could not meaningfully craft, mod, or scavenge. All he could do was rely on other players. So basically, he made just the worst, most useless character. Oh, I see. He ever. couldn't do it because of his, his stats. His stats his are just special. crap. Yeah, he's okay. rubbish. He was, in short, role-playing as a beggar, tattered clothes and all. Mr. A set up shop in Flatwoods, where both low-level players and veterans like to congregate. Here, he lies down on an empty mattress and waits for people to come by. He has put up, he has put up a free hug sign by his humble abode in the hopes of drawing attention to his self-imposed situation. In the world of Fallout, beggars are extremely common as post-apocalyptic conditions are harsh and not everyone has the means to live it up in a vault. Fallout 3, for example, has characters who will ask for purified water, which is somewhat of a rare commodity. Oh, yeah. If you gift them some water, you'll gain karma. But if you deny them, they'll die! In Fallout 76, which has no NPCs, poverty is a rare sight. After all, most players will go out into the world and get what they need by force. So seeing a player affect poor conditions has proven to be a startling sight for some fans. Mm. One player, Mr. A recalls, stopped by and asked how he could help. Perhaps he could use some armor or some guns. With an emote, Mr. A asked for a weapon, and the player went on to furnish a custom shotgun just for him. Others strive to be helpful, but can be a little rude about it. It makes me uncomfortable to see your bald head, one wastelander said oh, before no. giving Mr. A a knit grey cap. Another player took offence to Mr. A's attire and told him to put some clothes on before giving him a confederate outfit. Oh, Jesus. Imagine if that happened. Just in the, Maybe that probably does happen to, you know, homeless people in the street. They in get given just... The put w- some clothes on and they get given a confederate flag to wear. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. Hours later, that same player came back to check on Mr. A to make sure he was okay. Unlike most Fallout 76 players, Mr. A largely stays in the same spot. You see now, you've noticed how often I'm saying Mr. A. Yeah. Mr. A likes to play up the drama with his role playing. Sometimes he uses an emote to make his character pretend to vomit in the rain, oh. all in the hopes of getting some sympathy from other players. Specifically in the rain. It works too. I don't know why the rain. I'm vomiting in the rain. Oh no. The players who gave him an outfit also offered him some building materials. Build yourself a decent home, the concerned player said. The digital beggar does does make use of what people give him. Right now, he's made the smallest wooden shack available in the game. Not everyone has been nice to Mr. A, though. He claims that at least one player came up to him while he was sleeping to try and beat him up. (laughs) He ran away, only to come back to a broken generator. But that's okay. He was planning on dismantling his home base anyway. I will tear my shack apart in a week, and I'll pretend it was destroyed by a storm, he said. (laughs) So there we go. Oh, no. The adventures of Mr. A as a beggar. In Fallout 76. My father used to own a paper shop till it blew away. Shut up, Peter. It was blown away in a storm because it was made of paper. Do you understand? Ah. Ah. That was anyway, good, good weird news there. Yeah, that was some weird news. Just thought we'd uh, pop back into Fallout 76. Always interesting to see how players adapt to uh, you know a really terrible situation. I'm not, of course, talking about being homeless. I'm talking about... Uh, playing Fallout 76. Yeah. Uh, it's time to move on to another question, Peter. It is. This is from... Gutter snipe. God, it gets more venomous. Every you time. dirty gutter snipe. Ugh. I feel uh, like you're about to cane my hand for not doing my homework. Absolutely. Hi, lads. Hi, lads. Hope you're having a great day. So, you can send one gaming franchise and one singular game to their death. Now, word for word, this actually says, which ones goes, comma, myself, comma, I'd go for... Fr-. But what it means to say is, 
Which ones go? Question mark. Myself. Fragment. I, consider revising. Yeah, fragment. Consider. Yeah. Myself, I'd go for Assassin's Creed as a franchise and Tekken Tag Tournament 2 as a single game. Cause F that game. Uh, thanks, Blazems. Gutter snipe. <sighs> Dick. Yes. Uh, what franchise and single game would you send to the grave? I think is specific. <laughs> okay, so in the vein of Assassin's Creed as gutter snipes. So. To the death, it says actually. To the death. Yeah. Um, Far Cry. Far yeah. Cry can get in the bin now. Mm -hmm. Done. Done with that. Been done with that since Far Cry Three. Far Cry Four was and. Uh, it's only continued to just sort of float along. I think, again, it's fallen victim to sort of... They had a boom in, like, 2009, 2010 of, mm -hmm. like, reinventing these franchises, and then they've just been coasting on them ever since, and the games have been largely very similar yeah, ever since then. They have. Um, and Far Cry is one that can just bagger off, in my opinion. Absolutely one... no interest in it whatsoever, and I loved Fallout, uh, Far Cry 3, Fallout 3. <laughs> Yeah, the only one I've uh, enjoyed since then is uh, Primal. Primal, because and that's that was because it was your first PS4 game, right? Well, that's not because it was my first PS4 game. Peter saw it and was like, "This is the most amazing video game I have ever seen." No, no, it's because it was different enough. You know, it's very different. You know, like you say, all the others are very similar, really. I know they take place in different locations, but it's still, you know, here's a sort of fairly paradisey kind of place. And, oh, look, you can drive a Jeep. And, and there's a despot leader. Yeah. And Weird. There, there's some animals around that they're going to get you. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I know there was obviously animals around in Primal. That was kind of yeah. the point. But, uh, you know, no vehicles. Um, what did you ride in that game? Uh, you can you can ride, like, saber-toothed cats. That's you fun. You can ride mammoths and stuff. But even that's a reskin, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Just, just a total reskin of, yeah. of the same game. I didn't. I never finished it. I'm not saying it was, like, a particularly great game. Game but of the year. It was, game it was of a year more interesting Peter, thing. Peter, one of his favorite games ever. And not only was it something that deviated from the Far Cry mold, but also there aren't many games set in, you know, prehistoric Stone Age man times, either. No, the dialogue's so a bit tricky, isn't semi -unique it? Semi-unique there. Yeah, Can't well, it's all just subtitled. Of a, much of a story, they're just grunting at each other. They did speak to each other, yeah. That's weird. But, uh, uh, I have another one, though. Yeah, please carry on. There hasn't been one for a while. But I remember just being so absolutely unimpressed by both of the games that I played. Mm -hmm. And they had a they had a return during the PS3, Xbox 360 era. That's Crisis. <clears throat> I think oh, Crisis yeah. was just crap. Like, it looked gorgeous, but story-wise and gameplay-wise, just tedious. Nothing. Nothing to it. A very beautiful grey shooter. Yeah. Just just, just a nothing game. Uh, I imagine it looked unbelievable on PC. It looked really good on PS3. Mm -hmm. But it was just... There's just nothing to it. It's just a period of time where these games were hyped as, like, huge AAA games, and people bought them, including me, and then you would play them and think, there's nothing special about this at all. Yeah. There's, there's, this clearly has had a massive budget, but there's no soul to this game whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, it's not been around for a while, but Crisis, I think, has already died. But uh, I would kill it again if I could. Right. You got a series? I got a uh, series. Um, I, th I actually agree partly with Gutter Snipe mm -hmm. about Assassin's Creed. You can do better than that. Say that again. G Gutter Snipe. Yeah. About Assassin's Creed. I think that's, you know, it's suffering from the rinse and repeat kind of. I know that Odyssey was like slightly different. And mm -hmm. you know, some people said, oh, look, they, they, you know, they are reinventing themselves a little bit. That's That's partly true. What I feel like is... The best part about Assassin's Creed is that it's set in, you know, various historical periods. And, yeah, you just run around sort of free-running, third-person, you know, stabbing people. I think anyone, not, not anyone could do that. But what I mean is we wouldn't lose anything by getting rid of this strange series that has a bizarre Knights Templar thread running through it and something about the Garden of Eden and stuff mm. like that. You know, we could ditch all that and then someone else could just bring out a new historical series that takes place across different different right. time periods that's like less complicated, please and thank you very much. Yeah. It's just I don't want to get into those games because they're just too much for me, you know? No, I do, I do agree. I do agree. It, as you said, it, it has really tried very hard to reinvent itself. It has. A lot of people really enjoyed the last two, particularly the last one. But I think, again, as you said, it's down to the setting. Uh, it's just down to redundant. the. It's yeah. The, the a lot of the gameplay and the the story stuff is just so irrelevant now and yeah. so unnecessary. Where you could have these incredible, 
you know, historical fictional adventures mm. with demons and dragons and whatever else yeah. and gods in ancient Greece and stuff. But it doesn't have to revolve around this Templar assassins BS. Yeah. It's just so it's not necessary anymore. Mm -hmm. Again, like uh, I played Syndicate and enjoyed that for sort of the setting, the historical setting, and, and because there aren't that many games set in histori in Victorian England, mm -hmm. you know, in the same way that Far Cry Primal is set in prehistoric Stone Age times. Um, so I played it for that. But really, that's all I did. I, I kind of just wanted to explore the world and meet some characters and stuff. I was so uninterested in the story. Mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't give two swear words about it, you know? Two poops. Yeah. So Assassin's Creed, Just Dance can probably get in the bin as well. Yeah, who's buying point. it? I don't know who who's keeps, buying it. Who keeps buying it? I'm not offended that they're still making it, but I just kind of think... I know. just don't want to see them at E3 every year. Yeah, please stop just it. stop. Uh, as for a single game, though, I've also gone with something that's quite old. Hmm. Um, but League of Legends... Oh! Oh my God, is the worst... Oh, maybe it was Dota. General MOBAs, I think. Just, just P MOBAs. PC MOBAs, a lot of them, are the worst communities yeah, ever. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, a couple of my friends used to play. I think maybe it was Dota, actually. But in any case... League of Legends has a terrible yeah, community. Yeah, they all sure. do. Um, and I, I played either League of Legends or Dota with my friends for like one session because they were like, oh, give it a go, give it a go. And number one, they're so difficult to get into because everyone else you're playing against understands the micro, micro, micro details about all the items you can bring and like how to optimize your clicks and, mm. you know, your pathing and everything. Um, so it's super hard to get into. And on top of that, if you're not doing very well, which you're not going to be doing for the first, you know, couple of months because it's super hard to get into, mm. then people are so horrible. Really, really terrible people. They are. Because, um, you know, I, I don't know if there are also some free-for-all modes, but generally you're playing on a team. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you're letting your team down, you're going to know about it. So um, you're saying their own venomous community is is decided has decided the fate of that game. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Fair specifically, enough. I would send the community to their deaths. Yeah. Um every single one of them. Millions of people <laughs> yeah. killed. Um uh, rather than the game, uh, I mean the game doesn't interest me, but it's the mm -hmm. community that ruins it, I think, for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I think. Nice. Skyrim. Skyrim can go now. Done with Skyrim. You think? Stop. Okay. Stop with Skyrim. Mm. Um, so that would be that would be the one game that, that I could that I would kill right now. No more Skyrim. Stop it, please. God. Everyone's had their fun with Skyrim. I'm not saying it's it's removed from existence. No, I'm just yeah, saying, I'm not saying that. Just about stop with Skyrim. Assassin's Creed, but yeah. Stop talking about Skyrim. Stop it. It's stupid now. Okay. Everything's better than Skyrim and has been for a while. That's true. I'm so sick of hearing about Skyrim. But I do the one thing I do like about Skyrim is the the role play options and the mods. You know. Right. I've genuinely. I mean, you say you know, get rid of Skyrim, stop talking about it. I've genuinely been tempted to run a few episodes of my live stream in Skyrim. You're strange. Not playing I don't the, understand. Not playing the main quest, though. I want to get one of those alternate start mods and just play a character instead. Or like a zoo owner or something. Yeah, well, something like that. But yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. I think it's fun for that kind of thing when you want to play a zoo owner or a, you know, a, a hunter or a... Hunter. Hun hunter. Hunter. Good hunter. Or whatever you, whatever you like, you know. Yeah, get rid of the dragonborn, certainly. I'm, no one needs that. Bored. Yeah. Bored. Bored of that meme as well. That meme could outstate oh its welcome immediately. Is it? You're finally awake. Shut up. Done with you. Yeah, Get out of here. Did, didn't it? It's yeah. not even funny. It's, God, I was done in 2011. <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing about this game. Would you like to move on to a big Yes, discussion? I would. It's huge. Here it comes. This is uh, huge. Huge stuff, Peter. Submitted by a Lord of the Rings character. Ern Arrowsmith. Ern Arrowsmith. What a fantastic name. Just, uh, I it's if not. That's an online alias. Or... Not two Arrowsmiths. No. It's just Ern Arrowsmith. Ern Arrowsmith. Just Ern Single Arrowsmith. Yeah. Ern Arrowsmith says The heavily rumored Switch Lite was announced earlier this week. Mm. Do you see there being much demand for this? The Switch has a good library of games, many of which could be good on the go, but I think the main attractions of the Switch are local multiplayer and its versatility to support several different types of gaming experience. Also, Nintendo have stated that they intend to continue supporting the 3DS, but the Switch Lite could be cannibalizing those sales. Yeah. Thank you, Ern. So, the Switch Lite. 
this has been rumoured for quite a while now, hasn't it? We've been hearing a lot yeah. about it. There are lots of leaks and stuff like that. It's funny because we, in a previous podcast, it might have been last week or possibly the week before, we were talking, we were asked about uh, what you think the future of handhelds is. And this is essentially just the new handheld, really. Mm. Because what it is, for those of you who don't know, and we've got some more specific specs here, but just it, the headline is that it's a switch... Uh, I don't know if it's smaller. I think it might be a bit... Yeah, it's a bit smaller. Yeah. But specifically, the Joy-Cons are just part of the structure. They yeah, don't come it's out. It's a solid piece. It's now. all one solid piece, and you also can't plug it into your TV. So basically, mm. the only way you can play it is in the handheld mode version of the, the Switch, as you know it. Right. Um, so it is just like... I mean, it kind of looks like a Game Boy Advance, I think. Yeah. In well, a, a kind of modern version. Before we get started, mm. uh, it is it is obviously a budget... Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Um, would you, bearing in mind what the Switch, the full Switch is capable of doing, mm. would you rather spend more money comparatively? Yeah. In order to have the full features of the actual Switch? Because it's, this isn't a slimmed down model with cheaper parts inside. This is, th this doesn't really function as a Switch anymore. I thought yeah. the whole, the point of the name Switch is because you could switch between switch around. handheld and, and home console. This is just, it's just a, a Switch DS hybrid, basically. I mean, the big, the uh, I think the biggest point that needs, you know, that we need to know about in order to answer that question is what the compatibility issues are going to be. Like, uh, is is everything that's coming out on the regular Switch going to be able to be played by the Switch Lite? You know, if they're bringing out, yes. that is that yeah, definitely the case? That, we'll, we'll get to that in the in the stats in a minute. Okay. But yes, that is it's going to it's just as powerful. Okay. Well, so in that respect. Maybe you only ever play your Switch on the go in hand. Maybe you, or you know, maybe you mostly play it in handheld mode. Mm. Um, I don't know why you would wouldn't play it on your telly as well, but you know that might be just how you play it. And in yeah. that instance, if every game is still going to be available on the Switch Lite, then then maybe it would be would be worth having. But yeah, I, I suppose the logic here is that there's Nintendo have clearly done their research. The the 3DS is very much winding down yeah. and has been for a while. You know, the big marquee releases for 3DS for the last god a few years have been pokemon games and mm. now those are releasing on switch instead yeah. so they're clearly trying to plug the gap maybe while they decide whether or not they even return to the handheld yeah, market this because this a... is now going to be their handheld mm. the switch was already kind of their handheld and this is now specifically their handheld but if i got this there would always be times where i would be either frustrated that i couldn't play locally with friends or frustrated that I couldn't plug it into my TV. Yeah. And I would always rather pay a little bit more to have the option. Okay. Always. Um, I don't know how you would feel about that, though. Do you know the <coughs> RRP of a Switch? I know that this Yes, it's is, also in there. Yeah, I know that this costs about $200. Uh, so it's a, it's $100 less than the, the standard unit. I mean, yeah, $100 isn't that much more to pay for the ability to plug it into your telly, for, you know, uh, various you know, hardware differences that might make 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 a bit of quality of life difference to you. Mm -hmm. um, depends how much you care about that kind of thing, really. I think there will definitely be a market for it. But for me, it feels like that we're... This, this Switch Lite is almost almost should have been the starting point. Yeah, it feels and like that, And then the Switch it? is such a huge step forward. But now it feels like this is such a massive step back that $100 doesn't cover that that lost value for me. Yeah. Even, the, even though the... From a from a business perspective, the parts have allowed them, or the reduced parts and the form factor have allowed them to sell it for a hundred dollars less. Yeah, there's still, to me as a consumer, there's a loss of value there that totals way more than a hundred dollars. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, should we read through these stats? Just yeah, so we probably people, should. People have a clue what is going on. Uh, I'll get the first bit here. This is from Wired. Thank you for what to Wired for the for the great write up here. Not mm. weird, <laughs> as uh, the Simpsons called it. Homer was it Homer who thought it was weird magazine? Oh, did he? Yeah, I've not seen that. That's where he gets their, they get their first computer and he reads uh, tries to read weird magazine. Okay, and he's an idiot. Anyway, mm. I may have got that wrong. Probably did. First off, the kicker: you cannot connect the device to the TV. The mm. switch no longer no longer switches. Mm. The light integrates the Joy-Con controllers into the device, making it sturdier and abandons HD rumble and the IR sensors, as well as the Switch's much derided flimsy kickstand. Another quick point I've just realized. Yeah. Uh, Labo won't work with this, obviously. No, definitely not. Uh, its screen is slightly smaller too, a 5.5 inch touch display, display compared to 6.2 inch for its predecessor. Resolution is still 720p, working out 
as a roughly 12% improvement in pixel density. So, uh, yeah, so arguably that's actually... So, smaller screen, but same resolution. Yeah. So, it, it'll look better, I suppose. Mm. It also comes bearing a D-pad, replacing the original Switch's four buttons. It still supports Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and NFC, and has built-in gyro controls. Performance, Peter, is identical. Wow. I'm going to grab the rest of that. Yeah, uh, the upshot of all this is that the device is substantially lighter. It's around 277 grams, would you believe? Mm. Wow, what a statistic. That's great. Well, compared to the other one, which is in the next sentence. Yeah, no, I've not, <laughs> I've not finished it yet. 200, uh, substantially lighter, around 277 grams, than the original Switch. Uh, 400 grams with controllers connected. So that is over a third lighter or about a third lighter yeah so you, you will feel feel that difference yeah you will do um it also has very slightly improved battery life due to the lack of separate controllers uh three to seven hours compared to the originals 2.5 to 6.5 hours uh the switch light will cost 199 dollars in the us uh, an impressive 100 dollars less than the base unit and is launching on september the 20th uh there's no uk price confirmed yet but uh, yeah. presumably it'll be a similar drop, I'd have thought. Mm. Uh, now, personally, you know, we've spoken before. We we have a Switch. Yeah. Um, so we're very fortunate in that regard. And a lot of people watching and listening have a Switch as well. Yeah. So we'd love to hear from you and, and what you make of this. I know it's, a lot of people may have just been waiting for a budget entry point because there's a lot of fantastic games on the Switch and they will be able to play them on the go. And that may be all they want. And Nintendo are absolutely right to do this yeah but i can't help but feel as i've already said that the 100 dollars price drop is not worth the features that are no longer there but on the other hand is that partly because i mean like you say they were maybe released in the wrong order if the switch had never come out and then nintendo came along and said hey we've got this new handheld we've designed uh it can play the witcher and skyrim yeah and you know various other games that have been announced recently that we're like, what on earth? I mean, not the Skyrim was announced a long time ago, but, uh, you know, I'm constantly baffled by the games that are actually Switch compatible, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, if Nintendo came along with a, a handheld like that and said, yeah, this is $200. Do you want Do you want this? Anyone want this? I think it would probably be lapped up. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it, it exists in a, uh, a post-existing Switch world. Yeah, I guess it's a bit like just bringing, you know, bringing a PS3 out now. It's like, well... Yeah, but the PS4 exists, you know? If you've brought this PS3 min machine that you've invented out, uh, you know, like eight years ago, you yeah. might have been more impressed. Um, well, that's the thing. And I think um, I think Ern alluded to it as well. There's a lot of games on the Switch, first-party games, that, that are built around multiplayer. Yeah. It's particularly local multiplayer. So you're looking at Mario Kart. You can only then presumably play that online. Uh, which now requires uh, a paid subscription. Yeah. I think there's also sort of local system link where you can connect over sort of a local network and face each other on two switches. But then you have to have two switches. Yeah. And again, that kind of defeats the point of the whole, everybody jump in and stuff. It's like it's a weird... Into the minivan. It, yeah, where they're all playing in minivans in, in skate parks and stuff. And yeah. then they, the most expensive looking apartments I've ever seen yeah. uh, that millennials certainly cannot afford. Um, it's just weird, isn't it? It's a weird... It's a weird idea. On the one hand, I really do think that this is going to be perfect for some people mm. and it absolutely will have a market. But on the other hand, I can't help but feel like as it's a, a stripped back version of a system that offers so many novel and fantastic options and ways to play. Yeah. That it's just going it's, to, it's just a strange decision. It's, it's such a weird halfway house between the 3DS and something they already sell. Yeah. I feel like they could have made it smaller, lighter, and still kept some of the extra bits in and maybe dropped it by $70 or $50 maybe? I don't know. I'd, I'd still take a slim down switch, but I don't want to miss out on all the stuff that made it so special in the first place. Maybe they could have put a, put a kickstand on the back and made it so that you can buy Joy-Cons that do just pair with it so they don't actually slot in. So you've yeah. got like the full thing that's got joy-cons embedded in it mm -hmm. um, but you can also if you want to play it kind of on the go as a, as a screen with like three people you could still connect you can just connect regular joy-cons but then you might be just missing out on the price drop anyway because joy-cons i don't think are that cheap no yeah you'd have to buy so a bunch of them separately you'd probably so. end up not saving point. any money yeah and someone 
might have to like hold on to half of the console to play and the other person might have to hold. I don't know. I really don't <laughs> no, know. I'm suggesting it's that bizarre. that's not how they would do it. But may- <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe that way. <laughs> but they have been able to replace the four buttons with an actual D-pad now because the four buttons, when you took the Joy-Con off, yeah. they acted as, as like A, B sometimes. Mm. And obviously you can't do that with a D-pad really. That's all one piece. Uh, but yeah, please do let us know what you make of this. It's uh, it's an interesting one, yeah. I think. I, I don't think they're making a mistake by any stretch, but it's still it's still, it's still, a little baffling. It is. At the same time. It's a strange one, yeah. Peeper. Well, yes. Where can people find us if they want to on the internet? We're on the internet at Team Triple Jump. Almost everywhere that's worth being, mm. except Bebo. Um, we're, we're not there yet. We're working on it. Yeah. We're YouTube.com twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump we're on twitter.com and facebook.com forward slash team triple jump patreon.com forward slash team triple jump is where you can submit questions for the podcast Mm. get various rewards like early worst games ever this week uh this week yes um podcast the podcast that you're listening to right now if you're watching on youtube you can get an audio version at play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash triple jump that's the hardest one good luck have fun um, and uh, the website itself is triplej.mup, and we've got a store there where you can buy various merchandises. Uh, finally, Discord. That's just bit.ly forward slash team triple jump because Discord URLs are weird. They are weird, aren't yeah. they? They're so strange. Mm. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, you can do at uh, that Peter Austin and at confused underscore dude. You can also do the same on Instagram at that Peter Austin and at Ben Potter 20. We've got lists every Tuesday and Thursday, streams every Monday, Tuesday and Thursday, Monday, Tuesday being on Twitch. Thursday being on YouTube. Mm. Worst Games Ever is fortnightly. This week is a Worst Games Ever week. If you're a patron, as Peter said, you will have got the episode yesterday. It's a real doozy. But if you're not, you'll get it tomorrow on Sunday, Mm. which is fine. Podcasts are every Saturday, and we have some new shows coming very soon. In (sighs) fact, I think the first one is out next week. So it's finally happening. Thank you so much for your patience. Mm. We talked about I know a lot of you who, who listen to this podcast are acutely aware of the situation we've been in and that we tried to explain it before that when we, you know, last year we did a lot of shows and we love doing the shows. Obviously, it's a yeah. lot of fun. But when we started here, the goal was to get the channel started by doing lists because they are the most profitable thing to do. And we want to make sure that this channel has a future. Hmm. So we started off by doing that. And obviously, we, we only had the two of us. So the manpower was all woman power. All it, woman was, power. it was manpower at that point. Now it's a combination, which is great. We're, 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 we do have a bit of woman power. We have, actually. we have, we have women power. Yeah. Um, and and to begin with, it was just Peter and I, and mm. so we we were we were stuck doing the stuff that we would we were doing because we just didn't have time to do anything else. Now, thankfully, with our hardworking uh, little team and family surrounding us and supporting us, yeah, we are able to start these new shows, and over the next couple of months, they'll begin rolling out. Ultimately, resulting in a show every week. Oh. Uh, so please be excited for that i am i sure am too we shot a load of them this week yeah i'm tired my legs hurt your legs hurt. i got injured yesterday you did as well actually yeah yeah nearly died it was uh, dangerous worth it finally please leave us a review on itunes or your platform of choice something about algorithm and i do believe that uh, our wonderful patrons are owed two patreon discord chats this month they are uh, we've been very busy and hopefully we'll have news on the first one of those very soon so keep an eye out on the um the the patron 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 pa- pa- patron patreon the patreon page for for more information on that mm. finally big old thank you to pokemon centers mm. they're going to be launching their new ni- new nine of human centers soon hopefully they can heal my ability to speak uh, but it will be free because that's the way it should be yeah uh, make sure you support the bill uh, was it Bill 69 420? Uh, yeah, William 69 420. So keep an eye out for that uh, because the, the the Pokemon Center, they believe that human beings deserve the same level of healthcare as Pokemon that we use to fight each other. And I think those are words to live by. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I disagree, actually. You don't? I've you think we mind. deserve less than the Pokemon who fight each other. Yeah, that, I think that's the logic, isn't it, of, peop- of of nations where you have to pay for health care. No, actually, I don't like that. Yeah. I think the logic is that they don't want to pay for other people's health care, but also in the same, they don't seem to understand that actually it works out cheaper 
if everyone chip anyway it doesn't matter yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. that you know you you made that bed you lie in it but Thank you've been you lying in it for a long long time and the you pokemon to center to, there's, we're running out of beds yeah the beds are expensive you have to pay uh, the pokemon center you don't have to pay for the beds no. so uh, make sure you support them they're launching their new line of human centers H- how do you want to get to that bed ambulance it's going to cost you two thousand five hundred dollars take an uber yeah. take an uber yeah it's cheaper just bleed all over the seats you've got a horrible star rating but you know what you'll get there for free you will anyway that's enough of that Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back in a week's time, Mm. and we'll see you very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. What's up? He's Dick. Oh, yeah. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for for supporting me over the last month. It's been a pleasure. I hope you're welcome back, Ben. He's going to be really rusty and and probably just crap. So it's been an honor. Bye, everybody. Bye, Dick.